guys, Claudia here from QuickBooks Experts of Florida. Uh, we have, first of all, Happy New Year, beginning of New Year, and we start thinking about, you know, cleaning out those books and getting it ready or getting those books ready for um, the upcoming tax season. So first of all, one of the most common issues that I have with my clients is undeposited funds. I've been in a bookkeeper for over 20 years and this seems to be a very common issue with uh, a lot of my clients um, there's several several issues that um, several ways to fix it several issues that can be happening that's causing those uh, undeposited funds but um, let's go ahead and talk about the workflow in QuickBooks Online um, for income transactions so the right way it, to uh, to address income transaction is a customer hires us, we send them an invoice. A uh, customer likes uh, uh, likes the invoice and send the payment back for that particular invoice. We record the payment that we receive the payment in QuickBooks Online, and then when we deposit to the bank, we record the deposit as well. So uh, we're going to start here with one transaction where everything is uh, make-believe. So <laughs> we're just going to create a, an invoice. I have a client that came up to me and, oh, hey, Claudia, yes, I want your services. So um, I'm going to send an invoice to this client. And this happened to be my best client. Oh, okay. <laughs> We're gonna go ahead and select the services. Uh, go ahead, service or sales. You know, I'm charging this client $1,000. And I'm checking the date here. In this case, it could be net 15 or net 30 or do on receipt, receipt whatever, whatever way you charge your clients, right? Uh, we're gonna go ahead and sa save and send. But I'm just going to save and close because, like I said, there's no real client here. <laughs> okay, so the client is super fast in paying. Like I said, it's my best client. So <laughs> they send this check uh, super fast. <laughs> um, and I got the check same day. So we're going to go ahead and deposit in the, oh, or I'm sorry, record the payment first. So let's workflow, right? We can't skip anything. So record the invoice, record the payment so we're going to go ahead a couple of ways for us to do that we can go ahead and click on the plus sign and receive payment if i type my best client here the name of the client right over here oh misspelled hmm, right right there okay that invoice is going to populate right away all the outstanding voices will populate right away you can select the invoice you're paying the date and we're going to put it in undeposited funds. And I'll tell you why. Because especially if I deposit multiple checks in one day, I'm going to send it to undeposited funds. And then when I record the deposit, I will record it to whatever bank was deposited to on the date that was deposited in the bank. So, you know, check the dates, check the invoice, check that is undeposited funds and the client and save save and new, save, save and close, right? The payment was recorded. Now, so we created an invoice, received payment. Another very, very, very important step is to record the deposit, big deposit. A lot of clients skip this, this part here and uh, creates, a, creates a big issue with the system. Um, Let's suppose I had multiple, like I said, I'm going to be able to see all the undeposited funds right here. So I can select whatever I need. But in this case, it's just my best client for a thousand dollars. And I'm going to check that it's the checking account. The date is correct. You know, we have to be very accurate with all the, those items. The amount is correct. The amount is exactly what hit the bank. And then I click save and close. All right. So I, I recorded all the deposit, everything is good. So I created the invoice, recorded the payment, and I recorded the deposit. It's in the bank. So, you know, in two days, I'll be able to see that amount in here. 
and I'll be able to match it. Now, just so that you know, the way to match it, you're going to go to that transaction. This is nothing to do with that transaction. So we're just going to go here. Let's pretend that this is a thousand dollars. This is from the correct client. And uh, usually it's going to say, oh, you have a match here for a deposit. If it tries to match it with an invoice of payment, don't do it. <laughs> It has to match a, to a deposit. You have to go through the whole workflow on the income transactions. So uh, suppose I can't see it for whatever reason. I can always click on find a match. And it's going to show me all the deposits that I recorded that I haven't matched yet. Right? So let's suppose that this is the right one and that's for $1,000. That's not the case, guys, but we're just pretending we would select that amount. Uh, and then we're going to save and it would record this payment, right? If there is any discrepancy uh, as far as, the, you know, let's suppose that there is bank fees that was not accounted for on the invoice or if there is, you know, you're paying a loan. Uh, first, you got to make sure that you make corrections to the payment, you make corrections to the invoice. The good thing with QuickBooks is that you can always make corrections with a few exceptions, especially if the book's closed, then nothing, <laughs> nothing can be done. But um, if it is open, you can. Uh, okay, so we're gonna go ahead and find the deposit. Let's suppose I need to correct the amount of the deposit or uh, let's suppose I, I record it to somebody else. You know, if you click on that clock, icon on the top of the page is going to bring all the deposits that you have made and if you can't see here you can scroll down the gray and click on view more and you'll be able to see every single deposit that you recorded okay it's right here so you want to make a change you can maybe you selected the wrong client so this is not it this is the right one and you can go ahead and save and close if we're going to go without saving because that's not the case. If for some reason the invoice was incorrect, you can go to that invoice, right? You can go through here. Hey, see that clock? Ah, create here. You can go this way or you can go to the client and look that way, right? I see it right here. And now I am going to make corrections to the invoice because... The invoice was for $1,000, but I had a 3% bank fee. Uh, I already have the bank fee here, um, and, but this is basically an expense account in products. The way to create that, you'd click on the plus sign. If you don't have that created, um, you can go through your chart, uh, chart of accounts and create, um, I'm sorry, you can go to your products and service and add there, or you can just click on add new here. So it's a service, you call it um, bank fees or merchant fees, whatever it is. Okay, and income on the income account, it's not an income account, guys. So we're going to actually record an expense account, bank fees under products and service so we're going to save and close i already have that so we're not creating that we're just selecting over here bank fees this amount is going to be a negative amount very important thirty dollars okay the reason why is a negative account is because i am taking out of the invoice and recording it to an expense account called bank fees okay and if I'm paying a loan, like this happens a lot with Square, right? Because you you invoice a client for $1,000, but let's suppose you only received $900 because maybe $70 is for uh, a loan payment and $30 is for a um, bank fee or merchant fee, processing fee, whatever you want to call. Uh, we are going to create, in this case, case a product uh, in products and service, which is a liability account. Okay. So, um, that is already created square loan payment. Okay. It's actually a liability account here, but if you haven't, you, you can click on add new right here, or you can go on products and service and add new. We're going to, you know, square loan and on the income account, you're going to select 
a liability account. In this case, it would be a current liability, but it could be a long-term liability as well. Okay, so you just uh, square loan payment and then you save and close. I already have that, so we're not gonna save and close. We're gonna select here, square loan payment. Once again, it's a negative amount because we are reporting this to this liability account. So we're gonna increase that liability, okay? Uh, I'm sorry, we're not increasing the liability. We're gonna um, deposit to that liability to take away from that liability since we're making a payment on a loan and save and close. So here I want to, to understand exactly what's going on. So I have an invoice for $1,000. The, the customer paid me $1,000, but I only received 900 because $30 was merchant fees or pro processing fees and $70 was a square loan payment or whatever, you know, maybe a loan or maybe uh, whatever other payment that could be, but it's taking away from the total amount and it's not matching. If it's not matching in banking, what's going on in banking, then I won't be able to match it correctly. So I need to make that correction before I can match it in banking. Okay, so I'm just gonna go ahead next out of here and go without saving. We're not saving anything, but that's one, one thing that I wanted to address with you. And now let's suppose that you had undeposited funds for prior accounting periods. You already filed your taxes and you don't want, uh, you don't want it to dig in to see if this actually happened or whatever. The only thing we're doing here Okay, we're just removing that from undeposited funds. We're gonna record it to an equity account. We don't want any in retained earnings because that would mess up your the history of your income over the years. That's not a good account. <laughs> uh, we can do it on an equity account called owner's equity. That would be fine. Owner's equity, that would work. So first of all, let's go to undeposited funds. We're, we're gonna do it by click on, clicking on that plus sign, uh, clicking on bank deposit as if we are recording a deposit. And, we're, and then we're gonna see those transactions that happen on prior accounting periods. Very important. This is only good for transactions that happen on prior accounting periods. If it is current, you don't want to do that because for current transactions, we want to match them in banking. Okay, so those are the two transactions that happen on prior accounting period. Okay, so in order to fix that, we see where it says add funds to this deposit. We're going to go ahead and select an equity account, owner's equity, right from here. And we're going to put a, a negative amount for the total amount of the deposit. See where it says set, selected payment total of $5.95? This is going to be a negative $5.95. And I'll tell you what I'm doing here. Okay. And one more thing, guys, <laughs> very important. We need to deposit this to a clearance bank account. Okay, because it never went to this checking. I don't want this to be recorded on this checking because that's going to mess up my reconciliation. By the way, we're going to record another video on reconciliation, but that has nothing to do with that checking account. So we're going to go to a clearance account. Okay, and we're going to check on the date. And this total here has to be zero. So what we're doing here, we're recording that those two undeposited funds was deposited on this clearance account. And then we're going to take out of the clearance account and deposit this into an honors equity or honors equity account. And it's going to be a negative amount so that we can zero out this transaction. Okay, so we're going to save and close here. And... Okay, so if you select the plus, bank deposit. Hey, I don't have that anymore. That's awesome. Okay, great. Now, this is current period, by the way. Uh, the way we do it, we want to make sure that we match to a transaction. So we're going to go to banking. Now, um, this specific transaction, it didn't. 
didn't actually did not actually happen so <laughs> uh, we're just gonna make pretend here so let's suppose that this is the one okay you know six hundred dollars here and we're gonna go ahead and find a match okay so you always want to uh, match it to a deposit right and in this case, I don't have the deposit on this one. So, you know, remember the, the whole process. So we're going to go here, bank deposit, record that this, this was deposited. We're going to go to checking. All right. This is all pretend, guys. So don't worry about it. $600. And um, what was the date on the bank? gonna look at the bank the date was January 4th oh man this this is not my best client because they didn't pay right away right? Um, okay so let's record January 4th bank deposit select transaction January 4th we are going to the checking account and we're going to save and close. Okay, so we're going to go to banking right now. Hey, look at this. Oh, I love that. Okay, so we have everything nicely here and see where it says deposit and it was done on on january 4th sometime it could be like maybe january 2nd and then it finally cleared so we we want to go ahead and click on match and this is the right process this is the whole process okay so uh once again i want to go over the whole process first step create the invoice second create a payment to that invoice and third we're going to go ahead and record the deposit and finally we're going to match it in banking so this the whole process four steps can't skip any if you if you go to a transaction okay uh let's see this one here and you just add it most likely if there is an invoice already i'm sorry if there is a um invoice already created for this then you're going to duplicate those the transaction if you have a payment that was made but you didn't match here then that payment is going to be stuck in undeposited funds and then at the end of the year when you look at your your reports you're going to see a bunch of undeposited funds and it, if this is not corrected before you file your taxes then you're going to have all this discrepancy stuck on undeposited funds and then we're going to do what we did today to clear it out but anyhow so this is the the right correct process so create an invoice make a payment re uh, deposit uh, receive a payment <laughs> i'm sorry make the invoice receive uh, record a payment and record a deposit and match into banking I hope that's is, this is clear. I hope this this was useful to all of you. Uh, I would like to make more videos like this and help you out with with you organizing your books. Uh, but in order for me to do that, you need to subscribe to our channel. Go ahead and subscribe. Click on the button below to subscribe and also like the video, share the video so that other people can other people can um, can be helped as well. So. Uh, we would like to record more videos like this as well. So if you subscribe to our video, you can also write a note down below on what subjects you'd like to see in the future. So um, we hope to see you again next time. Thanks for taking the time and watching this video. And until next time, I will see you later.